Welcome back to the Body Meets Mind podcast. This is round two for us today, Paulie. Um, but uh, I'm I'm very pumped about this show. This is a this is going to be a great show um, for personal reasons and professional. <laughs> but uh, mate, let's let's start with you. How are you? You, you said just before you're gonna you're, you're about to shave off the curls. Yeah, thinking about it, like I don't I don't know if I'll go the Tommy buzz cut, but I'll I'll, I'll probably do it. Like my, my thoughts were during the the cooler months, I was gonna grow it out a little bit and see, you know, what what comes of it because I used to have very long hair, then I had short hair. And I thought I'd go somewhere in between, but now going, I'm about to go to Moama where it's going to be about forty degrees, and for practical reasons, yeah. I'm not interested in letting that soul glow anymore um because humidity just uh shit gets out of hand very yeah. very quickly so yeah. i think it's gonna the buzz cut will definitely ensue or somewhere close to it well so, hey tommy we'll be, we'll be two shaved shaved monkeys on the on the screen which i'm looking forward to i'm always looking forward to two shaved monkeys on the screen <laughs> <laughs> that was, that's great. But, you know, I, I can't take all the credit for it because uh, most of the time I do my hair uh, myself, but every now and then our guest today just finishes the last parts of it. So maybe that's a great segue to uh, introduce maybe. Siobhan. Welcome Siobhan, to the show. Siobhan, are you a professional hairdresser? Yeah. Do you know what's really funny? I actually am. I got qualified as a barber when I was like 13 or 14. It was my very first job. and um, as I was working there as like, you know, an assistant, he was like, I might as well train you while you're doing it. So every Monday night I used to cut men's hair when I was like 13 or 14. That's remarkable. And so I can look, see why. There you go. I can see why. So when Tom does his hair, I'm like, oh, can I just, you know, do this or can I clean it up? But how funny is that? I know. So <laughs> yes, amazing. I can yeah. answer and, yes and, to that. And for the next 45 minutes, we are going to be talking about how to get the perfect male haircut. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly well look let's um for for everyone listening to the show who perhaps isn't familiar with your work uh siobhan i'll just read out your your bio um and uh and uh there's also been a lot of things that you've added to that bio as well that we we can talk about um mm. but, uh, Everyone, Siobhan Lou is a breathwork meditation healer all the way from the Scottish Highlands. After involving herself in a few breathwork classes in Bali, whilst working as a head trainer and coach at a functional training facility, she was deeply moved and is now inspired to help others gain a greater sense of self-awareness, practice being mindful, and reconcile with past traumas and stuck energy, having completed her healing training in New Mexico. Siobhan works hard to provide people with the tools to heal themselves, leading to greater fulfillment, authenticity, and clarity. Siobhan also loves her two incredibly cute beagles, Archie and Abby, as well as drinking cacao with her partner whilst he drinks coffee. And might I add, Siobhan now drinks two coffees a day. Um, so, so she's highly caffeinated. But beyond that, you're also a qualified meditation teacher. You've got your cacao practitioner training and you've done thousands of breathwork um, classes worth of the hours now. So there's a lot more to add to that bio. But mm. honestly, my dear, thank you so much for coming on the show. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. I know that bio seems like quite old. I know. <laughs> need, to add, yeah. need to add in a few updates. And I think the last time I spoke to Paul was like probably when that bio was fresh. <laughs> I would, That's very true. I thought so. so you've, you've, you've evolved from cacao to coffee. You've come to the dark side. How does it feel? I know. Well, coffee was a leeway until until we were moving, which we're now in Queensland, until we're moving, because I didn't want to ship all the blocks over. And I thought, I'll just wait because there are warehouses in Queensland and I'll wait till I get here. So I feel like I'm going to finish the coffee we've got right now, get back onto cacao because it's a game changer. Or I might do one cacao in the morning and then a coffee in the afternoon because I do love both. It's tricky. It's a tricky one. Yeah. So you're using again is what's happening. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to have the dosage of the cacao and then I'm going to use my coffee in the afternoon. They both have really good, you know, positives and it's really hard to decide which one. So I'm going to fit them both in there and be really selfish about it. I think it's a wonderful idea. Mm. Yeah. Well, Vonnie, one of the things that I was um, interested in just, just reading that bio again, is that, um, you know, you've got, you, that you were deeply moved after um, doing that breathwork class in Bali, but it really kind of 
doesn't speak to the intensity and the severity of what you were going through at the time and just how moving breath work was for you as a healing modality. So for people that aren't really aware of, you know, your background and, and, and that experience in Bali, did you want to elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah. So at the time, I always say to people now, like breath work finds you. At the time um, when I was experiencing that session, I was going through lots of panic attacks um, every day. I would say like literally a million. They were just one after the other. They would never stop. Um, and then that turned into a really deep depression. I didn't think I was depressed at the time. It was probably Tom and others around me that picked up. So I was actually quite lucky to be surrounded by people that were like, Hey, she's not herself. Like she's changed. Um, and then the panic attack. So when you're, you know, say to a panic attack, stop, 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 like just stop, it gets worse. And that's what I kept doing. Um, and then just one day, you know, I tried a breathwork class because the way it happened was, you know, we were sitting at a community table and I just asked someone like, oh, hey, what do you do? And they said, I do breathwork healing. And I was like, I love meditation. And on the back of that, I was actually meditating every single day during my panic attacks and during my depression. Um, and I still was meditating, but obviously nothing was shifting what was really going on in there. So when we met her and we said we jump into the breathwork class, me and Tom were literally like invited to her to the gym we were working at. And we just said to each other, let's just jump in and try it. It wasn't if I was like consciously deciding to do breath work. So I thought mm -hmm. it's meditation. We'll be sitting up or standing. We'll be in a group. Um, and then as soon as we got into it and did the session, I was just like, what the fuck just happened? As everyone else does now when they do their first session. Um, and it completely changed my life. But that was the one thing I did. And you breathe for what, 35 minutes? And I've never, ever had another panic attack touch wood since then because it just shifted so much ang anxious energy in my body and really told me like it was so direct as, as if to say this is exactly why you're anxious and why you're depressed. And I was like, wow, like just wow. You know, it was a really, really life changing 35 minutes. Yeah. Well, take us back to that, that 35 minutes and I'm assuming you were deeply immersed in it, but mm. what was going on inside of your body and uh, if, if you can articulate the release that took place uh, within that, that, that process and how you came out the other side with such clarity. Yeah. So when, so obviously when you're doing the breath work, when you breathe into that belly breath, the belly breath is like your energetic emotional center. So clearly I was keeping all these emotions really trapped and locked in my body and they were just building up and they had nowhere to go and they were, you know, coming out as panic attacks and anxiety. So I was releasing that as you breathe into that belly breath. So I was clearly releasing that energy through my breath and my body. Mm -hmm. The next thing that kind of happened to me was I had, you know, for people that have done breath work before, we kind of get those like crampy claw dinosaur hands. So your hands can kind of seize and curl up as you're doing it. In terms of the spiritual side of breath work and the energetic side, the arms and hands are an extension of the heart space. So clearly I had a lot of healing that needed to be done around my heart space going through mm. that your breath or breath work or the style of breath work really nourishes you how you receive things in your day-to-day -day life so for me I'm a very direct person I need people to tell me do this do that I don't really visualize anything it's not as if I like take things in apart from that direct messages so the breath was really saying to me you know, you're anxious because you're in a job with no purpose. You're feeling this way through your arms and your hands because you're holding on, you're not letting go and you're not listening or trusting your inner voice, like your intuition. And the breath really just connected me to that. So as I was going through the session, I was releasing the energy through my emotions. So I was releasing it through tears. My body was really, you know, seizing up and releasing that energy through it all moving through the breath. And then in breath work, you get a chance to really release and yell into like a pillow or out loud, wherever you are. So just releasing that anger, frustration, that anxiety was just whatever was stored in there was literally emptying and coming out of my body through my breath, through mm -hmm. releasing and just moving that energy. So the experience was just 
And I don't know what it was about it because I feel like as I'm saying it, people will think why that might be quite scary or that might sound, you know, a bit extreme. But I felt so like held and supported and nourished by my breath and my body. Like it gives you that really deep trust to like, hey, it knows what it's doing. Like it's it's helping. Like I felt really, you know, like I was being helped and nourished And the way I now describe it to others is that this style is really nourishing, like it's really on your side. And I just felt like I could handle whatever it was giving me. Um, And then at the end of the session, when I was in Shavasana, that's where you're just in that deep, deep state of meditation because your mind is, you know, it's clear pretty much and the energy shifted throughout the body. So I had this space for my inner voice to come through and be like, you need to you know, take this back to Melbourne and tell everyone about it. Cause I just couldn't believe that no one knew that you could experience what I did in through using your breath in like 35 minutes and let allow that one session to change your life forever. You know, it just really blew my mind. And then at the end of the session, I was so overwhelmed thankful, emotional, couldn't believe what happened in the best way possible. I think I just lay there and I turned to Tom, he was on my right. And I was like, I can't move. Like, I'm just so in awe of, of what just went on in that session. It was just, yeah, it was mind blowing stuff. So, so for people who are hearing that for the first time and are thinking, you know, maybe have a feeling like I, I, I do hold on to things, but I'm not too sure. If you could take us back to who you were prior to doing that first breathwork class, if, if, if we had have asked you, are you someone who holds on to things? What, what would you have typic- what would you have said then? And then what has the breath showed you now about what it is the difference between holding on to something and then feeling like what it, what it means to be able to let that go? Yeah, I think before it, I, I I would have said, no, I don't hold on to things. Like I would have thought I was a pretty confident person. I was, I would say how I felt. I would very much be, you know, I have my daily practice and I've I've always been about that, like forever. I've always loved meditation. I've always loved self-help. I've always loved positive thinking, taking action. I've always had goals and dreams. Um, so I would have said, no, I, I don't hold on to anything. I'm very expressive. Um, and then obviously post breath work now I'm like, wow, I was holding on to so much shit. (laughs) Pre breath work. And now I know myself on such a deep level, whereas before it was probably surface level, but I thought I knew myself. So it's completely different to pre-breath work, post-breath work, but I only know that now that I've done many breath work sessions, mm. you know, so mm. it's taken me on a journey. Um, so I just wouldn't have known. I'd had no idea what I was holding on to pre-breath work, I think. Tommy and I talk a lot about, uh, you know, uh, uh, top-down approach versus bottom-up approach, not versus, but uh, two different offerings. And it seems like you've you, you've really gone down the path of both, um, mm. being having having a solid meditation process where you stay in your mind, uh, mm-hmm. or the origin begin in the mind versus breathwork practice where it starts from the body and mm-hmm. starts to have that kind of um emancipative kind of experience that, that that you've experienced um you know i'd love to for you to kind of speak to the difference in your experience uh, from from both yeah and it's it's a good question because i actually incorporate both into my daily practice so i i try and do them both every single day and i'm actually qualified in both so i'm obsessed with both right. and i think both have a very different effect to, you know, I can pull different things from both. So the way Mm. I see it personally is I do breath work first. So I do like a mini practice every day to get me into my body and to clear my mind. So it's like going into that every day. It's like my mind and my body knows what's happening. It's like, you're in this for the purposes to get you into your body, clear Mm. any excess energy you're holding on to. When that's done, I literally go straight into a seated meditation practice. So, you know, some I'll, I'll whatever I feel that day I'll use. So whether it's like a guided one, whether I'm just sitting with myself, whether it's binaural beats, like I try and really change up to keep myself experiencing different things, pulling different things from different meditations and just to try new experiences as a teacher. 
So from the breath work, clearing the energy, clearing the mind, as soon as I sit in meditation, I'm like, I'm already in meditation. Like I'm ready to open up to maybe creative ideas coming through. I'm open up to just listening to my body a little bit deeper and listening to what it's saying. And just to get myself in that really clear, open space. So when I start my day, I'm creating a pause. So I'm not reacting to things that are going around in my day-to-day life. I feel like I'm really clear to hold space for other people. So it's really motivating for me to do the breath work because I'm like, I can't hold space for clients unless I cleared my own shit. So I'm not, you know, putting on to them. So I feel like the breath work does that. And then the meditation, I'm just like, I'm just clear and I'm ready for the day ahead. So I like to do mine first thing in the morning. So I'm ready for that. Um, Whereas I know, Tom, you're probably like last thing at night that you prefer to do your breath work slash meditation practice. Yeah, I think I um I love it um as like a <clears throat> way to to bring my arousal level down um and people always get so funny when I use the word arousal. I mean, psychologically aroused <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Down, like after a jiu-jitsu class or whatever, you know, cuz b- before I started doing it at night, I just couldn't sleep, you know, you'd be rolling for an hour, hour and a half and then I'd be awake. I mean, you obviously you remember this, like I'd be awake till like 11, 30, 12, um, mm. wired because my body's still in that fight or flight. But getting a little bit more experienced in jiu-jitsu obviously helps, but then also doing that breath work b- brings me down. But it sounds like from what you're doing, you're actually clearing your your stuck energy. And, and you know, I mean, one of the words I think that I love that you you call it is like it's an exfoliation Mm-hmm. getting rid of things that build up, you know, and I think one of the things that I've learned the most from you, Vonnie, with your journey in breath work is just how subtle the things that build up and how dramatically those things have an effect on us, you know, whether mm-hmm. people cutting us off, it's not, it's not always these giant precipitating factors that lead us to mental dysfunction. It's often these little things that happen throughout the day that then become these big things because we don't actually deal with them. And mm-hmm. Breathwork has an amazing power of clearing those things, you know? Yeah. And it's always, I just think the the answer or the kind of collective answer that everyone gets from breathwork is that everything is going to be okay. Mm. So I would say to people, if you never want to do a class and you just want the the kind of collective general answer, it's always comes through as it's going to be okay. You know, what, whatever happened, you're going to be fine. That's the kind of collective thing I hear from people. Um, but yeah, it definitely creates that space for me. And I feel like for me as well, like I know it calms you down, but for me, it gives me a lot of energy. I'm like, I'm ready. I'm clear. I know what I got to do today. I'm so excited to get into it. Cause like whatever's coming through me, I'm like, can I go now? Like, let's go. I'm ready. Like I've got something yeah. like I've just got that spark of motivation to just go. Um, so it gives me energy rather than calms me down. So I think if I did it before bed, um, I'd probably be like ready to journal. Like my body's just attuned to doing it in the morning. So it's like, let's do it. You know, it's used to that routine now. Mm. Uh, this is a question I was going to ask in terms of uh, arousal, quote unquote. Uh, <laughs> when you were talking about, uh, you know, being able to pick you up and create focus and uh um, uh, and drive as opposed to bringing Tommy down, are there different strategies that you can apply to be able to curate or uh, I suppose have the benefit of either or? So let's say, you know, the breath work that you're currently doing is picking you up and giving you that drive. Do you know of a method that can bring you down and and perhaps create the, the effect that Tom has? Yeah, so I feel like, like I said, breath work really nourishes you. So I think if you're someone that's like, I need to do this in the evening, you can actually set that intention to be like, can you just calm me down? So I think intention is everything, but at the same time, your breath will just give you exactly what you need. So some of my clients do it mid afternoon for an energy boost. Um, and they find that really helps them in terms of doing (sighs) another breath work. When I did my meditation teacher training, we actually learned about 10 other breath work styles. Like there's so many out there that I think people just group breath work into one thing. Same as meditation. There's, you can meditate making a cup of coffee, you know, you can meditate walking your dog. There's so many different ways, but the breathing that I think helps a lot of people is that box breathing where you kind of 
breathe in for a count, whatever works for you. Some people need to start with two and build up to three to five. Hold, breathe again. So you're kind of doing it in that box shape. Um, And I think that's really powerful for just counting, for giving your brain something else to focus on, which is going to calm it down. Um, And really just holding your breath exhaling for a long time um that will really help calm people i think but that was something we got taught on the meditation course rather than the the breath work healing yeah, mm. love it did you um when you when you became qualified because you went all the way to new mexico um mm. and obviously we'd love to touch on that as well just the amount of personal healing um work that you had to uh move through before you were qualified which i think is amazing it, you know you're your um teacher david elliott um just his insistence on you moving through your own stuff first so that you can then be um ready to serve other people i think is a wonderful way to become qualified you know and it's not just reading a textbook and being able to rationalize a whole bunch of things you know but um but before we get into that when you brought it to australia um did you ever think that it would the people that you would end up working with would end up having these giant life changes, you know, (laughs) moving on from relationships, you know, quitting jobs. Like you've had, you've had some, some pretty crazy uh, experiences from the people you've worked with. Oh, like insane. And part of me is like, I wish I wrote them all down. I do. I normally remember everyone's journey. Like I'm, it's one thing I'm really good at is knowing everyone's journey, what their last journey was. And I obviously ask as well if they're willing to share. Um, but I never expected just like every time, every single day, it still blows my mind at how bloody Ah. powerful it is. It Mm -hmm. blows my mind. I'm like, I just can't believe that that happened. And it's funny because when people share, they're always like, this might sound weird or oh my, I don't know if this happened. I'm like, it did. You know, everything is really true to you. And what happens is your experience. And no one, this is the other thing. No one can take that away from you, what you just experienced. And I think the reason I like people to share after a session is so other people can be like, oh, well, if they felt that my experience must be, you know, true to me as well. So I think the sharing is one of the most beautiful things I love about the session is just hearing other people um, go through their experience and how the breath really works with them. You know, I've got clients that are so visual that um, I've got one client that sees always see shamans coming in. Sometimes they teach her like another form of breath work in the breath work. And, you know, and I, I think the one of my favorite things is hearing when other people connect to people on the other side like the spirits or family that come through it's one of them like it gives me goosebumps every single time that you know they hear something and some people get that on the very first session that it's just it's mind-blowing right. yeah I just love it yeah mm. I'd love to uh investigate a little bit more about the power of breath work in a group environment mm. versus doing breath work solo um and what you found personally for your in your own experience of doing that versus um you know the participants that in in the courses that you conduct as well yeah I think what I normally say to people so when you're they're both very different and I recommend people try both just to see one which one you prefer and you can pull different things from both experiences I think in person if you're someone that struggles to maybe shift energy or you're an empath you'll kind of use or you can use other people's energy to help you move that emotion. So say if you're in a space where there's like maybe four or five people really, you know, deep kind of in grief, sadness, crying, and you need that energetic boost, it's really going to help you shift that energy. Also, when you're maybe releasing anger, frustration, and you're kind of getting angry and you're yelling, I think when one person yells, another person goes louder, louder, and it gives you that permission to be like, Rah, and just get it all out. Um, so just, I think, helping people move energy. If you need that assistance, it's really good to be in that group. The softer side of that is I always encourage people to try and maybe connect to their humor. So have a bit of a laugh. So when they start giggling, 
the laughing is so contagious in the room. Like it's hilarious. Um, that can last for like 10 minutes solid because you know, when people just get laughing going, Mm. it just doesn't stop. So a lot of people will walk out of the room saying, Oh my God, I've not laughed that hard in years or ever. And it just really helped them see maybe what they needed to do in their life, how to connect to their joy, how to maybe try and find their humor again. So there's so many different things you can pull in person. And then there's online where you can put your headphones on, your, your, sorry, your headphones on, your eye mask on, you're in your own little cocoon. You've got nothing around you and you're just in, you're right in words. You've got nothing else. And it's just you in you and you've really got to listen. You know, you've really got to get in there and find out what's going on. So I think for me personally, I prefer online because I'm very much, you know, like to discover things on my own. I I internalize pretty much everything. So I like to be like, I'm going to figure this out and it's going to be me in me. So for me, I prefer that. But whereas other people will prefer you know, the, the kind of collective energy of in-person. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in, in terms of your group classes, do you, cause I know you do themes, but um, do you have like a typical um, client or are there, are you, do you notice any kind of commonalities with the people who resonate with your work? Do you, do you see like typical pain points that people have that then, you know, find a lot of benefit from in breath work. And yeah, what are some of those similarities? Uh, breath work for the inner child. Mm. So something I picked up on very quickly is that, um, you know, one people have never, and I hadn't before I'd done breath work, I'm like, whatever inner child, um, yeah. until I did my first breath work session, I'm like, Oh my God, it's you, you know, I can see you. <laughs> um, so when I did that very first kind of inner inner child healing class it was insanely powerful um and then i decided that people don't check in with that every single day so now i do it in every single breathwork class no matter what the theme is i'll connect the theme to the inner child so everyone can check in with their inner child every single time they do breathwork um so people have like discovered their inner child they've talked to them they have felt them they know there's like something in there um so i think that is really common no matter like what class I do, pretty much every single human will have some sort of message from their inner child. They'll feel it or they'll release something that the inner child or their inner child's been holding on to. So that's a huge common running theme for everyone. And then I think the other one is no one really knows how to release their kind of anger or frustration. So yelling into a pillow, a lot of people will come because they love screaming into a pillow so I kind of give his homework I'm like go do it every day you know just release that whatever you're holding on to even if it's just little um or I encourage people to do it in their car which is like my favorite just yelling down the freeway you know it's fun you just gotta get it out do you, um, do you ever do that and if so <laughs> what's causing you frustration <laughs> maybe that's for a non-recording <laughs> podcast <laughs> no just to do it for fun it's just fun yeah uh, I am, uh, Jesus Christ, I I did, yes, Um, the breath work that you are focusing uh, on and being able to create change in people's lives, where do you think, what place do you think it has in like generalised therapy when it comes to, um, you know, being able to evolve uh, like like a human's place from uh, an emotional state? Um, do you think that people can really create significant change with this alone? Um, can it be coupled with, uh, you know, uh, behavioral, uh, therapy outside of it? Um, what do you have to say to that? Um, just a really boring answer that I think you've kind of got to do what works for you. So me and obviously yeah. me and Tom talk about this all the time. Like I had a woman um, come out to me in my last in-person event and she said, thank you for saving me 10 years of therapy. Um, yeah. And she had a lot to say about, you know, her going to psychology and that one session changed her whole life. Um, and I actually disagreed with her. And I said, well, some people find talk therapy very, very helpful. And that's how they, you know, get their answers. Whereas other people like me will do one breath 
breathwork session and get all the answers. So I think it's whatever suits you. Some people need mm-hmm. both. Some people need to do Reiki healing. Some people need to exercise. Some people need to talk to someone else. So I think whatever helps you or resonates with you, um, that's what's going to, you know, help you in the long run. So I think it's worth trying everything, find what works for you. And then going with that. But I just think everything's worth a try because you're never going to know what works for you until you try it. And also some people need to try like so many different things to find that answer. So, yeah, I think it's really worth whatever works for you, I guess. And then when you find your thing, stick with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So right. we, we we asked a, a question um, on our um, podcast before. Um, it was a listener question. The listener question was, um, you know, what, who have been some of your inspirations um, and people that you've really learned a lot from that have helped influence the way you um, you go about your work? Um, what, how would you respond to that question? Who, who are people that really inspire you and, you know, and how have they influenced the, the, your breath work? Oh, good question. I've never really thought about that. I think for me, I watch a lot of like YouTube and listen to really different podcasts. So I feel like, you know, if I find something, I'll just pull inspiration from it. Um, So there could be so many different people. Like I can't think of one. I think one thing that's really helped me is learning my human design. I really, really resonated with human design. So when I found out what mine was and started learning about it, I'm like, oh, like I felt really seen and heard. And Mm. then I kind of evolved my work knowing that that was my design and it actually really helped it. So I think that's the one thing in terms of like listening to human design podcasts or following human design people on social media that really helped me. And that's the only one thing at the top of my head I can think of. yeah, unless you can think of any Tom that I kind of rave about. <laughs> well, I can think of many, but I, I this this is not my show. <laughs> this is I know, I'm just trying to think of what I've said, but I honestly think it is listening to lots of different people yeah. and whatever they're saying resonates, I kind of pull from that and I'm like, yep, yeah, that's going to work for me and then I'll put it into my own kind of thing. So I wouldn't say there's like specific people that I hang on to or whatever it's it very chops and chops and changes all the time as i as i move along my journey yeah yeah well you're I, I, yeah sorry paul i was just going to say quickly but as far as what i've been able to gather one of our biggest differences is that when it comes to like me learning about something i need to read their books and go into their podcasts and all that kind of stuff and really and then i can speak broadly on you know, oh, the reason why this person influenced me is because of this idea and this idea. And you're, you're like, I feel like the minimum effective dose as a concept was almost designed for you. It's just like, <laughs> what's the, what's their whole life's research boiled down to a sentence that that sentence is all I need to then mm. go and change and then go and do that work. So I feel it's like, much, much less than like a body of work or a body of research, just a simple idea that you can take that then, you know, massively influences how you go about things. It's probably why Alex and Leah Hormozy are so influential right now because they're so like that. They're just so yeah. do this, don't do this. This is what will happen, you know, but I don't want to put words in your mouth, but what do you, what do you reckon? Yeah. And I'm actually, that's probably two names that I'm loving right now because they're very direct. And like I said earlier, I like things direct. So it's like, do this, don't do this. This will help. This won't help. And I'm like, yep, I've got it. And then I go Um, and same like reading a book. I'll read half a book or a quarter and I'm done. And I'm like, next. And I'm very much happy with that because that's the way I work. Whereas Tom will like read the whole book and he'll Google someone and he'll write a blog about it and he'll do whatever. But I'm very just little things. And and then I go. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I think there's something to that in a, in, in a, and, and, you know, like with respect to both of your learning styles, whatever resonates for you mm-hmm. as a, as an individual, you know, what, mm-hmm. whatever you need to be able to apply these things and for it to actually stick, you know, um, but in terms of time efficiency, for you to be able to say, right, concept, got it. Tick. I'll put that on my little in my little feather, feather in my cap and move on. That's great. You create your, you know, you don't need a, be uh, devoted to a dogmatic religion. You just need to take a concept of it and create your own religion, right? Essentially, yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> uh, you, you always been um, fantastic. 
Yeah, it's great. It's it, it's fantastic because it's like you get you get to experience and curate essentially um, your your own path, which you are now teaching to, to other people. Right, yeah. you're using a combination of um, uh, meditation, top down, uh, breath work, bottom up, and all these concepts. Like you said, it, you're like inner child is something that has resonated so much for you that you were like, this needs to be in, in, in every breath work mm. practice that I do. Yeah. So, cause you, cause you know how much of an impact that has had on, not just on you, but on others around you. Uh, yeah. but it, I want to, I want to thank you so much for, uh, you know, jumping in and uh, having a chat with us. You're always uh, a wonderful voice and incredible source of knowledge and inspiration. Um, is there anything, is there anything that you could think about um, that you would advise people listening back home that they could activate today that could have an impact on their lives moving forward? Just like one simple thing that they might be able to do starting today take three really big deep belly breaths every single day and that's it that's pretty good simple simple direct Mm -hmm. very hormozy like (laughs) i'll take it (laughs) hey uh vonnie what's um what's coming up for you in the next six months what are you looking forward to um courses books in the pipeline potentially programs what's what's happening um, well, I'm starting my in-person community again from scratch in Queensland. So I'm really excited to be building that from the ground up, hopefully. Um, and then we've got our Unshakable You project um, that we're both doing, which is breathwork and counselling combined. Um, and then I'm going to be launching or not launching, starting to build my own breathwork healing signature course this year as well. So lots to be excited for. And yeah, just just being in a new state, I guess. Amazing. And there's, yeah. there's a community, like the little that I know about uh, the, like where you guys are based, there's a thriving community there for, for what it is that you guys teach. And I could see uh, people around, uh, you know, belly, belly heads, like eating up what it is that you're doing, like so. really, really <laughs> benefiting dramatically from it. Yeah. Hope so. Hope so. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Hey, Vonnie, where can people find you? Um, at Siobhan Lou Breathwork everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Move on, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Easy. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks again, Siobhan. Thank you.